Let's get right to it. Episode 1 of my painting log, and in this video, let's have a look at all the models I painted in November 2023. Painting miniatures is my shtick. On a scale from painter to gamer, I'm probably well over to the painter side, but I do always aim to play games with them. Eventually. But, with my life as busy as it is, I used painting to chill out, and where possible, I want to feature these minis in my videos. Now often, my videos are around a theme or a project, but in future, when I struggle to find a strong theme, the plan is just to lump these guys into one miscellaneous painting log. So here it is, though disclaimer, I wouldn't call all of these finished. But first, let's have a look at these orc looters. These were kindly given to me by a very kind chap from the US, Daniel Cannon. The absolute legend offered to post to me a bunch of 2nd edition and Rogue Trader Orc miniatures. The plan was to paint these up as part of Orktober, but I decided to focus on 40 Gretchen instead. Fool. Anyway, these are for my Old Hammer Space Orc collection. I used a lot of contrast on these. I started with a white undercoat, and then painted them Vallejo Golden Yellow, and shaded them with Reichland Flesh Shade. The orc skin was Gut Ripper Flesh, the red was Baal Red, and the blue was Leviadon Blue, followed by layering on Macrag Blue and dry brushing with Lothan Blue. I used Skeleton Horde on the bony bits. The style of these that I was going for was a kind of patchwork style in line with what the Death Skulls are known for, which is making something from a load of scrap. They are a far cry from the grimdark Mad Max style orcs we have today, and more akin to court jesters, but such were the times when 40k didn't take itself so seriously. The bases have goblin green rims, and the top of the base is a tan earth colour. I have done plenty of bases already that are goblin green all over, and I wanted to do a variation on these which still looks retro. I can still see some details on these which haven't been painted, but they will have to stay as is. From three feet away they look fine to me, and I don't think anyone can call them not tabletop ready. And I know, I haven't mentioned here every colour that I used, but that's all you're getting for now. Sticking with Old Hammer Orcs, I also painted this Bad Moon Weird Boy and his minders, which I obtained in a trade from one of my favourite gentlemen on Instagram, the awesome Jim aka Dakawa. Taking the court jester look to a new level is this Weird Boy, it's an excellent sculpt, simple, yes, but it really sells the idea that this orc shaman is calling down buckets of psychic energy to smite his foes. Like any bad moons, yellow is the theme here. Indeed, I basically use the same recipe as the Death Skull looters. Of course, black is essential in a bad moon colour scheme, so you'll see that here too. But you may notice more unfinished areas on this guy. Now one fun fact about 2nd edition compared with later editions is that your army didn't have to be one specific tribe. You could have a range of tribes, goths, death skulls and bad moons, an orc tapas if you will, all riding the war train in beautiful harmony. There were in fact entries for each tribe's boys mob in the orc codex, each with their own distinct war gear, some of which were necessary to unlock other options in your army. So this is why I have Bad Moons and Death Skulls in my collection. I basically want to catch all the Orcs. Another old Metal Orc model I have, and another Bad Moon, is this mech armed with a flamer it seems, and sensible enough to be wearing his face shield. This, like the looters, was a gift from my man Daniel Cannon. Thanks again buddy. Before we depart from Old Hammer entirely, let me show you this Plague Marine I painted. This is a test scheme using a sandy palette, somewhat like the Death Guard colour scheme from the Horus Heresy era. Over a white prime I painted the model Dark Sand and then applied Skeleton Horde all over to shade the recesses. Using Stippling, I gradually built up some highlights to finish the armour. I used browns, rust and verdigris to show weathering, and a combination of greens on this crotch guard and mask. The base 
is mainly Tan Earth, since I wanted to depart from Goblin Green for the Servants of Chaos. The plan is to paint more of these, but I may vary each one slightly, since the box art for these models depicted did indeed depict some variation as well. And yes, Chaos is a sign of things to come. New Year, New Army, and all that. That is the only 28mm Chaos miniature I've painted, but it's not the only Servant of Chaos. I painted this tiny Vindicator and tiny Rhino, 3D printed minis I acquired in a lot from eBay. I suppose they are Servants of Corn with their red and gold scheme. Then there's these tiny Terminators and tiny Legionnaires. I haven't finished these yet. And to be honest, calling them painted is generous anyway, since I basically just slapped on some fleshed hair as red contrast over a white undercoat. The idea with all of these is to make a couple of 10mm armies so I can play Warhammer 40k with tiny models. It's a gimmick I've had in my head for years, and hopefully I'll bring it to realisation soon. Before we go back to the greenskins, let's have a look at the only Ultramarine lucky enough to receive any acrylic this month, but not fortunate to have a base. Yep, he's still glued to his plastic shot glass painting handle. He's the Lieutenant from the 8th edition launch set, Dark Imperium. I acquired him in a Primaris job lock some time ago, and my Primaris Ultramarine's army lacked such an officer, so it made sense. Anyway, I painted him in the same manner as my Primaris Ultramarine's, messy and weathered. Most of this was achieved by sponging on blues over a brown undercoat, switching to lighter shades on the areas that would receive the most light. After that, it was just a case of painting on the other detail. There wasn't much edge highlighting here at all, so it was much faster than, say, painting my second edition Ultramarines. Details included his yellow Aquila, red bolt pistol, and the energy crackle on his power sword. Although I aimed for Messi, I also tried to include elements of the retro look of Ultramarines, such as the yellow Aquila rather than the metallic gold, and the red pistol rather than black. The plan is to do a load more Ultramarines like this, to match those I painted from the Leviathan box set. Sticking with contemporary kits, I also painted these three orc war bikers, which was a Christmas present last year. I figured I should get them painted before this Christmas came. Okay, I said they were contemporary kits. I know this kit's been around for a long time, but you know, it's not old hammer, that's what I meant. I already have four of these war bikers, so the plan was to build them sufficiently different so that no orc looked too similar, but sticking with the overall paint scheme. I painted each model in three parts, rider, biker, base. After that, I stuck them together. I smashed the cork button hard on this one since it makes great looking tarmac on the base, in my opinion. And fun fact, tarmac is short for Tarmacadam, named after John McAdam, the Scottish civil engineer whom some people in my family believe was our ancestor. Though, the mapped out family tree doesn't go back that far, so I think it's probably just wishful thinking. Anyway, it's nice to know that Tarmac still has a place in the grim darkness of the far future. Maybe its SDC pattern was never lost in the Age of Strife. Anyway, what a digression. Though I do feel a Tarmac song coming on at the end of this video. Stay tuned. I can't tell you the skin recipe for these orcs since I pretty much use a different one each time. The general principle though is I start dark, splash some Screamer Pink into the recesses, and highlight by mixing the dark green with the lighter green, or by mixing the dark green with the dark sand. The rest of the colour scheme, as you can see, is red and blue to fit with my own Death Skull scheme. Well, it's kind of Death Skulls, it's also kind of Evil Suns. I wanted to keep my options open. The last model is the limited edition Goth Rocker released at the end of 2022. This model has languished in my to paint pile for almost a year, suffering in the throes of greyness while my indecision crippled me. In other words, I was paralysed in not knowing how to paint him. Anyone else had that feeling before? Not wanting to paint a model for fear you would choose the wrong scheme? I guess I wanted this one to be special, and unlike my other orcs. Anyway, last week I bit the bullet and threw some paint down. My only condition was not like the Death Skulls paint scheme, and snazzy. This is where the pink and the yellow came in, along with the blue Converse boots. In contrast, the guitar is merely black because no self-respecting orc metalhead wants to be outdressed by a musical instrument. For the bass, I used some riveted plastic card and some thin strips of cardboard so it wasn't too flat. The paint job was worn metal, because again, the goth wouldn't have lived it down if the bass was prettier than he. The plan was, with an opponent's permission, to use this as a knob with wire banner. I think the theme of it 
marries well with the idea of a knob shouting wah, especially when he has a microphone and squig amp. And that's everything I painted in November, or attempted to paint in some cases, but almost finished is still better progress than merely grey. It wasn't my most productive month, but then my day job has been hectic and I was ill on and off for three weeks, but with November done, we shall have to see what December brings. Fewer orcs and more space marines, I expect. You'll have to wait and see. If there's enthusiasm for it, I might be putting out more painting log episodes like this. Oh, I almost forgot. I did paint a land raider as well. A raider of land. But that got its own video, so I'm not going to labour the point again. Oh, what's that? Do I have another song for you? And to that I say, is the Emperor a corpse? Of course I have a song for you. It's that tarmac song I mentioned earlier. Enjoy. On the open road, where the day it turns to night, Tarmac stretches a ribbon of black, the highway chorus no turning back, a rhythmic diesel hum, echoes what's yet to come. City lights flicker a cosmic dance on the asphalt stage we find romance. Tarmac, Tarmac, Tarmac dreams endless seems Tarmac, Tarmac. Tarmac dreams endless seems Tarmac The world unfolds, the silence screams beneath the stars We chase the wind on this road of life Where stories begin <laughs> <laughs>